Okay, we have started to look at uh, normal curves, and sometimes called a normal distribution. Um, specifically, the normal curves are symmetric. They are single peak, i.e. they're higher in the middle, lower on the ends, and they're bell-shaped. So sometimes we call them bell-shaped, as we've been talking in class about that. You need two numbers to describe any normal curve. You need the mean and the standard deviation. Here are two, two examples of that. Here, the mean is in the middle. But the standard deviation is a little bit bigger than this one. What, that, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that the data described by this data set is farther apart than the data described by the data set on the right-hand side. Because the standard deviation on the right-hand side is so much smaller, means that the data is very close to one another. When the standard deviation is big, means that data is spread apart. So another way to think about standard deviation is how far apart the numbers are spread. The farther they are apart, the greater the standard deviation. Again, we only need two numbers to describe any bell curve and standard deviation. Again, a normal distribution is called a normal density curve. Remember, our previously defined a density curve is where the area is under the curve is equal to exactly 1. Again, um, the normal distribution is described by its center, its, um, which we describe as the mean, and the standard deviation is the distance from the center to the change of curvature points on either side. We abbreviate the normal distribution with this symbol here, a brand new symbol here. We've been using x bar, but this is the symbol mu, which is also means mean. Um, it means mean of the whole population, where x bar means mean of our sample. That's the big difference, but they both mean mean, calculate the average. And the standard deviation is the symbol sigma, which I have introduced in class. Um, this is the standard deviation of the whole population. The standard deviation of our sample is usually abbreviated with S. So you need to be aware that there are two symbols for mean and two symbols for standard deviation. Um, we, we use this because this describes many, many data that you collect in any kind of experiment or observation. Many, many times the data will come out to be approximately normal. So this is such, because it's so common, we're going to become very um, experts at this type of data set. So here's, a, here's an example of how we can use the mean and standard deviation to actually answer some questions. So here is an Iowa taste, uh, test of basic skills given to 7th grade students on their vocabulary. And they tell it's approximately normal where they use this notation, which just means that it is normal. And the first number is 6.84, means which represents the mean. The second number is 1.55 and represents a standard deviation. So they ask us three questions. Sketch a normal density curve for this distribution. They ask us what percent of the vocabulary scores are less than 3.74. And they also ask what percent of the scores are between 5.29 and 9.94. These questions can be answered fairly easily as long as we draw an accurate bell curve on this. So I'm going to draw a bell curve here with the mean. And usually we just need to go out two standard deviations both to the left and to the right. Okay, so the mean is again that middle number, so in this case. 6.84, then I add 1.55 to the right two times, and subtract 1.55 to the left, and we can get an idea of how the data is split up. If you remember from the empirical rule, 68% of our data will be within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of our data will be within two standard deviations of the mean, and if we do choose to go out the three standard deviations, that wouldn't be 99.7% of our data. But again, we usually only go out the two standard deviations on most normal bell curves. So let's take a look at these three questions in a little bit more detail. So here's a little bit more accurate description of the bell curve. As you can see, the mean was placed in the middle. And then I added 1.5 to the right, actually all three times, to show the three standard deviations. And subtracted that same number 1.5 to the left three times to go three standard deviations to the left and right. So once we get this bell curve drawn, we can answer questions like we saw in the on the previous slide. So the first question was what percentage of the data is less than 3.74? Well the idea here is that we would be using that empirical rule, the 68, 95, and 99.7. We know that 95% of our data are within one standard deviation, or I'm sorry, two standard deviations of the mean. So 95% of the data represents this red shaded section of the curve. But since we only want the section to the left of it, we know then that these two parts together have to total 5%. If there's 95% in between, that leaves 5% on the outside. But since we only want one tail, 
then we take the 5% and we divide it by 2, and that gives us the 2.5% that represents us under the left-hand tail. We call this the tail. So again, we, by getting those numbers, we can answer questions similarly to the problem that was on the previous slide. So the question was, now, what, what percent of our data was in between 5.29 and 9.94, given that same normal distribution? So if you look here, we realize that, again, 68% of our data is in between one standard deviation, so that's the red sh shaded section. But you notice we only want the right-hand part to the right. So we know it's 95% within two standard deviations. So if you go 95 minus 68, that gives me what's left over on the outside. So that would include this section here, as well as this one. But since I only want the right-hand side, the green side, I divide that by two, and so it's 13.5% of their data would be between 8.39 and 9.94. So again, to get our final answer here, we could actually add 68 plus 13.5 and realize that there was 81.5% of our data between 5.29 and 5.94.